Hello everyone, this video is to teach you double entry accounting, debits and credits. When accountants record business transactions into the company's accounting system, uh, they need to make sure that the accounting equation stays in balance. Now, the equation is very simple, you learned in chapter 1. It's assets equals to liabilities plus equity. And by now, you have already learned different accounts that belong to each of these three categories. Uh, what is double entry accounting? Well, for the equation to remain in balance, uh, each transaction needs to have at least two accounts. And we also have to record at least one debit and one credit. That's rule number one. Two accounts involved at least, and we need to have at least one debit and one credit. The second rule is the total amount debited must equal to the total amount credited. So debits equals to credits. All right. Now let's take a look at how uh, debits and credits work. So what we call this tool T accounts. So basically we draw a T and this is an account. Uh, it could be cash. We could also have uh, many of these T accounts if we're going to write it down on a paper. Uh, we could have, uh, let's say, machines. Or maybe we have accounts payable. So each of them ha has a T account. Now on each of these T accounts, the left hand side is the debit side. Uh, let me write it out. Debit. Okay. Credit. So left hand side is the debit side. The right hand side is the credit side. So for machines, it's the same debit, credit. Accounts payable, same thing, debit, credit. And we're going to use uh, different sides of the T account to show uh, increases. We use these two to show increases and decreases. Okay, so to do that, for example, I'll take cash as an example. First, I have to tell you, depends on the nature of that account, whether it's an asset, it's a liability, or it's an equity, um, they're, the way they use in debits and credits to show increases and decreases are different. Take cash as an example. Cash is an asset. For assets, we will debit for increases and credit for decreases. That's the rule. So if I tell you, um, I paid $500 to buy a machine, So for me, my cash uh, actually decreased because I paid out $500. Now, cash, we will show a decrease on the credit side. So I would put a 500 on the right hand side. Because I bought a machine, the machine is also an asset. And assets increase on the debit side, which is the left-hand side. 
I would write down, oh, my machine. Now I have an increase for machine for five hundred dollars. So if we look at our accounting equation, A equals to L plus E, short for assets equals to liabilities plus equity. Um, for assets, I have a increase of five hundred dollars for cash. And I have a decrease of five hundred dollars for machine. Now, if we refer back to the rules of double-sided accounting, um, do we have at least two accounts? Yes, we do. We have cash and machine. Do we have uh, at least one increase and one decrease, one debit and one credit? Yes, we do. Yeah, cash is a credit. I'm sorry, made a mistake. Cash was a decrease, and machine is the increase. So I have a credit for cash and a debit for machine. So my debit and credits also are the same amount. They equal to each other, 500, 500. So I am following the double-sided accounting rule, double-entry accounting rule. Okay? And that is an example. Now, let me tell you a little bit more about debits and credits. So as you see right here, this is the T account. On this slide, it looks a little bit different from what I draw on paper, um, but it means the same thing. So a T account, we can use this T account to analyze and track information for any account you've learned so far. I want you to know that um, debits, debit and credit in the accounting world simply means left side and the right side. So don't try to uh, put a, a meaning to the world word debit or credit maybe you think oh debit always means an increase or always a decrease no that's not true because um, i mentioned earlier it completely depends on what type of account is the rules change so how do they change uh, in a nutshell it changes like this yeah, for all the assets increase, we show the increase on the debit side. We show the decrease on the credit side. For liabilities, it's the opposite. If we increase a liability, we would show it on the credit side. And when we decrease liability, we'll show it on the debit side. So let me give you an example. Let's say earlier when we bought this machine, we didn't pay cash. Instead, we paid on account. So, um, on account. When you see this, it means on account, it means uh, pay later. Okay, we mentioned that businesses usually give each other credit terms. Uh, to They allow each other to pay uh, later. Yeah. I bought, a, I bought a machine $500 and on account. So in this case, pay later means I will be paying in the future. Uh, I owe now. So we use accounts payable. For accounts payable, it's the same. Debit on the left, credit on the right. For me, do I? you have to think, do I owe more or do I owe less? Now, um, Yes, you would owe more right now because you bought a machine you didn't pay. Before you buy before you bought this machine, you didn't owe 
、uh, the vendor. Now you owe, so you owe more. Yeah, for liability account increases is on the credit side, so we will put the five hundred on the credit side for、um, the accounts payable. And in this case, our accounting equation is still in balance because on your assets you have five hundred dollars more、uh, machine. On your liability side, you have five hundred dollars more debt accounts payable. So your equation is still in balance. Five hundred increase on the left hand side, five hundred dollars increase on the right hand side, and you also have one on the debit side. The other one is on a credit side. Okay, following the rules of double sided accounting. For equity, it gets a little bit complicated because、uh, equity actually is comprised of four types of accounts. So this slide is actually a perfect、um, example to memorize the rules.、Um, we talked about assets and liabilities. Equities has、uh, four components. Just memorize the the four rules、uh, individually. So, under equity, common stock and the revenues increase on the credit side, decrease on the debit side,、um, and the dividends and expenses.、Uh, Are the opposite. So if you look at the plus minus plus minus, you can see dividends and expenses are the opposite from revenues and common stock,、um, which makes sense, right? Because if you have more revenue,、uh, you basically have more equity. But if you have expenses,、uh, if you have more expenses, you have less equity. So that's why those two have the opposite rules. Uh, same thing. Common stock. When your company is able to raise more capital,、um, you know you have more equity. But when you pay out the company's wealth to、uh, the stockholders, the company has less equity. So、um, the rule is opposite. All right. So you just need to memorize these six rules. Really, really well this week, and it will help you.、Uh, you know, you will really find them very, very helpful when you do transaction analysis. All right, let's try to do one. Oh,、um, by the way,、uh, I also wanted to show you a journal entry. So, what is a journal entry?、Um, well, this one you see the box on the screen. This one in the yellow box. Is an example of a journal entry. So basically, after you analyze、um, the the accounting equation, and you know that uh, oh uh, this account is an increase, and another account is a decrease or an increase, and you identified the debits and credits, you just Put it down. Write it down in a journal entry format. So using our example earlier, bought a machine for five hundred dollars on account or on credit. We wrote the T account. We analyzed. Okay, machines、uh, increase. Accounts payable also increase. So on the paper.、Uh, You just need to organize this information. This one is called a 
journal entry. So earlier here, uh, this one is called the T accounts. T accounts is this tool on top. And now I'm going to show you the journal entry for this transaction. This is a transaction, meaning an event that happened in a business that needs to be recorded. So to record this transaction using journal entry, you will, um, first of all, write down a date. So perhaps today is February 6 and you second you write down the name of the accounts so I will write down machines and in the next line you write down accounts payable all right and now um, there will be we will write down if well, uh, machines is an increase and it's a debit. So we write down 500 for machines. And then for accounts payable, we would, uh, since it's a credit, it should be a little more on the, it should be on the right hand side. So I use, I imagine that there's a, imagine there is a column there are two columns, yeah? So this column has a heading for debit. The other column has a heading for credits. So my accounts payable is going to land in the credit column. All right. And I can write down a note, uh, optional note, and say bought machine on credit and this is a typical journal entry a typical journal entry okay so what happens if uh, a few days later and we paid off so uh, let's say 20 days later we paid off. Remember, we owed five hundred dollars, and now we pay pay it off. Now you have your second event, which is you paid off what you owe on the machine. So now you have a second transaction. Um, so let's say pay off money old for machine on February 21st. Okay, we can do the same analyze so this is how i would approach it first step i would think which accounts yeah if i'm paying um, money then the first one to come to mind should be cash okay so you would use cash and another one uh, is you need to think what are you paying for um, should you use machine again? No, because uh, if you use machine again, that means you're getting another machine. Um, this time you're not getting another machine, you're just paying off your debt. So the other account should be accounts payable. Accounts payable. Okay, so those are my two accounts. Now you analyze, well, uh, for cash, do I have an increase or a decrease? Well, cash, I should have a um, decrease because I paid $500. How about your accounts payable? Do you have increase or do you owe more or do you owe less? 
Well, I owe less because I paid off my debt, so it's also a decrease. So let's look at the T accounts. Um, by the way, you you build a one T account for that account, and you will all the transactions that happens to that um, account will continue to be accumulated there. So in this case, my cash goes down by five hundred. Cash is an asset, so it decreases on the credit side, 500. For my accounts payable, it decreases on the debit side because it's a liability account, 500. My machine account did not change. Okay, so now um, you can draw, draw a line on a T account, and this means to calculate a balance and I have zero left because after you pay off 500, you owe zero. Yeah, so this drawing a line means calculating a balance. I put zero on the credit side because for accounts payable liability, um, the normal, normally the, the pos positive increasing side is the credit side. That's why I left the balance. Um, on that side. However, if let's say we only uh, let's say if we paid um, 300 just as an example, if we only paid 300, I would still have $200 left. That's my balance. Okay, so now let's put it in a uh, journal entry. So now my journal entry is the date February 21st and I write down the names of the account cash accounts payable cash is a um, sorry go back to the $500 five hundred dollars Five hundred and zero. Okay, pay off five hundred. That's a credit. I make sure I write down on the credit column, accounts payable. I write it on the debit column to show the increase. That is the journal entry. So I can put a note, pay off debt. All right, so those are the examples for um, a very simple example for recording transaction. In your slides, you have many uh, really good transaction analysis, uh, and they're also in your textbook. I encourage you to go through each and every one of them. Um, the blue box is analyzing the accounting equation, and the yellow box is analyze is the journal entry, and on the uh, right hand side, um, those are the T accounts. Okay, so make sure you go through every one of these transactions. All right, and don't forget to memorize the six rules of debits and credits for different types of accounts. This will really, really help you build a solid foundation for this whole semester. So the better you memorize this, the easier the rest of the semester it will be for you. Okay, thank you so much for watching this video and happy learning.